Welcome back. Let's uh, let's make this work on your iPad with a touch event. Right now, it only works with a click event. That's good enough for testing. And as you can see, I connected my uh, my iPad here, so you can uh, so I can test the software whenever I save here. The live server does, so it also updates on my iPad on my tablet, so I can see what's uh, going on there and test it there. So I can try and and click, and it it works, but it's the click event, so it's a little bit of a delay, and it's uh. It's not really good, you know. So let's take this and move it out to another uh, method. But first, I want to show you how you can uh, use this on your iPad, where you can both test it in your browser, on your computer, and on your tablet uh, at the same time. We are already using this uh, local live server here that is on port 5500. So uh, in order to get this running on our iPad, on my iPad, I need to go to, as you can see here on my iPad, it's uh, like, connected to 192.168.1.4 and then uh, colon 5500. So that's what we're going to do. But in order to get that, I can't just take the the address up here, 127.001, because that's not my, my network's IP address. So I can go on my Mac, I can go to System Preferences, and I can go to Network, and then up here in my Wi-Fi that my iPad is connected to, I will get this one here. So all I need to do is to type this one in, 192.168.1.4 and then colon um, 5500 just like we have up here. It's probably different on your computer so you have to go, uh, I'm not sure how you do it on a PC but I know that you can open up the command line and then you can type in IP config and then you can get uh, uh, then you can get your IP address there for your network. So that's how you can do it and that's how I've done so you can see what's going on here. So I can, I can play the drums here and it's um, it's working, but not really well. It's kind of boring if you can't play two different sounds at the same time. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's not going to sound really good. And you can only do that on a, on a tablet, on a multi-touch device, right? So what I want to do here, first of all, I want to move this callback function out into its own function. So I'm going to do that up here. So function, let's create a function. Let's call it play drum. We want, of course, to receive the event. And then we're just going to take this stuff here and just copy it or actually cut it and put it in here. Yep, just like that. And then we need to, instead of having this callback function here, we need to just call this one and it's play drum. Like this. I'm going to save that and I'm going to go back to the browser. And it still works. That's we still ha only have the click event, so you can still hear it on the iPad, but there's a delay, and you can't play two sounds at the same time. So let's go back to the code and let's add another event listener. I'm just gonna copy this one, and I'm gonna change the click event to touch start, like this. Okay. So now we're gonna have another problem. Let me just try and play this on the iPad. I can't hear the sound myself right now, but uh, it's being recorded. So, uh, but you should hear when I hit this one time, I'm only hitting the kick drum one time here. You will hear an echo. You will hear two sounds. And that's because the iPad is listening. It's, it's actually changing. It's translating click events into touch events. So it's actually getting two different events here. And the way we can, uh, we can do that is we can go up here and then we can actually just prevent the default. So the way we do that is, do, 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 do. let's just first in this one, I'm just gonna take the event and I'm gonna prevent default. And now it prevents the iPad of interpreting the, the click event as a touch event. So now you should only hear one, one sound here. So you can play, uh, So now you can also have uh, play two different sounds at the same time with the multi-touch. So that's pretty cool. But there's one more thing that is irritating me, and that is that we remember we used the the 100 viewport height in here, and that works just fine when you're in the in the browser here. It fits to the viewport height, and if I uh, if I change the size of it, it just adapts. But it doesn't really work on the iPad. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna scroll up and down. You can see it; uh, it's it's disappearing under the line, you know. Um, 
out of the screen because uh, an iPad and maybe other touch devices, they don't interpret 100% viewport height as the same as a browser on your desktop. So a way you can fix that is you can go, I, I got it from this article here, The Trick to Viewport Units on Mobile by Louis Hobrecht, something like that. And I, he has a hack here and he uh, I implemented that. I'm going to show you how to do the same. So in our code, first of all, we want to go to our styles when we're here already. So in the height here, I'm going to add another height property. And we want to make a calculation here in our height property. So I'm going to type out calc. We're going to take a variable that we haven't yet created, but we're going to create that from JavaScript in a moment. And we're going to call that, that variable is going to be V8 viewport height. We're going to set that to one viewport height. And that's the variable that we uh, still haven't set. And then we're going to just multiply that by 100. You'll see why in just a moment. So that's, so this will override uh, this one up here, but if if the browser doesn't know how to use variables or calculations Then it's just gonna fall back to this and then we have what we have. And we're just gonna have to live with that. So So yeah, I'm gonna set this variable here To one viewport height, which we will see right here. So uh, in our app.js, I'm gonna make uh, a method here or a function actually and I'm gonna call it set viewport height so function Set viewport height. Then we gotta make a variable here, call it vh, and we gotta set that equal to the to the inner height of the window, like this. And then we're gonna actually multiply that with 0 0.01, so we get one percent of it because we multiply it by a hundred out here, so we get exactly what it should be, right? And then we have that, but then we have to set the variable, the CSS variable, so you can actually use it in the CSS. And the way we do that is we go to document and document element. And then we want to set property, or actually we want to set a style property, so style and then set property. And what do we want to set? We want to set the viewport height that we just referred to in the in the CSS and I'm going to use template strings here because we need to put a unit on it so I'm just gonna use the back ticks and I'm gonna take dollar sign curly braces and the VAs that we created up above and then outside this I'm gonna add pixels to it to px so that's gonna take that's gonna set the variable this one here to whatever we calculated to here and um, and add pixels to it as the unit. So now we should be able to run this function here, set viewport height. And let's reload it on the on my iPad. And as you can see on the iPad, it still doesn't work. And after I run it, nothing happens because I have made a mistake. It's still doesn't fill out the whole height on the iPad as you can see so I'm gonna go back to the styles and that is because this should not be in quotes like this and by the way this one is the fallback it falls back to this one if this one doesn't exist let me try to save that and see if that works and I don't know if you noticed but down here on the iPad now you can see that it uh, it changed so now it uh, it works it looks like it works but the problem is when I change the orientation and also if I go to the browser here let's go back and I'm gonna change the size of the browser window then the pads disappear out of the browser window but I want them to you know to, to, to be there all the time so I'm gonna go back to the code to our this one here to our JS and I'm gonna add an event listener to our window a resize so every time the window resizes I want to fire this one so it's gonna be window we're gonna add an event listener to that and we're going to add the resize like this what are we gonna do we are going to we can call the set viewport height so we can take this one here and we can put it here 
but we don't want to call it like this. All right, so that should work. So when we go back to the browser and we resize, it works again. So that's every time something happens. But um, let's see what happens if I go to the iPad. I'm picking it up right now and I'm uh, changing the orientation and it still doesn't work in, uh, in portrait mode. And that's because there's a little delay. So what I want to do here in the resize event listener, I actually just want to remove this here and I want to have a callback function here that calls that function. So that's a little weird, but uh, I want to set a timeout. So I want to wait like one millisecond and then I want to update it. So I got to go set time out. And then after this timeout, we're just going to set the viewport height. This one here, and we're going to set it after one millisecond or sorry, not one hundred milliseconds. And so this is going to run every time. Let's see first if it works in the browser still. It does. And let's see if it works on the iPad. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to change the orientation and it. And it looks like it works. It's uh, every time I change the orientation, it, it, it fits. Actually, we're missing one thing here. We still want to have this one up here. So it is set initially when you load the program, right? Just like that. And then every time you, uh, you resize the window, it'll, it'll update. So this is it for now. It's a um, very simple little thing. There are many other things you can do with it. You can add uh, more pads, more sounds, different sounds. You can uh, make some cool CSS animations when you tap on the pads. You will uh, get them to flash, get them to light up, or get the icon on it to, to, to resize or something like that, you know. So you can make it look better. And um, yeah, and please show me what you do with it. Uh, leave a link and a comment in the comments below. And Please share this video if you like it and like and subscribe and everything. That will make me really happy. And yeah, that's it for now. I hope you liked it and see you in the future.